So I think we'll we'll go ahead first. We'll we'll try to you know, look at uh, the. In the meanwhile, I have around like uh, around 10 steps involved during this uh, application packaging. Okay. Now, to start with all your prerequisite applications. So first, you you would select when when I say it is a product rule, that is also a rule, so it has to be part of a rule set. Okay. The first thing you select is where are you going to place this product rule, in which rule set and in which version. So we need to select that. Okay. So for that, you need to have your rule set open or your rule set has to be unlocked. So initially what you do is once your application development is all done, you lock all the rule sets, correct, so that any new changes uh, have to be avoided so you lock all the rules but for creating a product rule you choose one rule set okay and you unlock the rule set then you would proceed with this um, packaging wizard okay so that's where you will select in which rule set and in which version you are going to place your product rule. Okay, so that's probably the first step that we would be looking at Okay, fine. Okay, so once we log in, Right, so let's start with the wizard. I'll go into my configure. So application, distribution, and package. After distribution, it was the path was package. Package. So configure application distribution and package. So directly also there is an export option. So I will be showing that why uh, we we wouldn't go for that. So this is your packaging wizard where you have got around 12 steps. Okay? On the other hand, you have an export option. Where directly you are exporting it, it could be either by an application rule set product or patch. So this is more like you are bundling everything together. Here you you cannot select what is required and you no, know, you cannot make any choices. So ideally we we wouldn't suggest going to export directly. Instead we will package. Okay, so if you launch this. Uh, application distribution if you click on export you'll you'll you know point onto this okay. so when I click export I, I will be coming onto this particular screen okay it's always suggested go for packaging where all steps are involved and individually you can choose among uh, the details okay I'm, I'm audible, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay, great. Okay, like I said, the first thing is your product rule creation and which application are you going to generate as a product? Is it HRS? Yes. And here you get to see all the applications that are accessible by this user listed out on the drop-down. For this user currently, 
I only see HRS. So yes. Now, where do you want this product rule to be created? In which rule set and in which version? Okay. Right. So before uh, giving in the rule set and version here, make sure that it is unlocked. Okay, because you are creating a rule there. Right. HRS and I think there's okay. I'll I'll put it in over and over and over. Ideally, the one where you are placing it only unlock that particular rule set version. Rest all have to be locked. So this is the first thing that we do. Next. Okay. So next is. Do you have any built on applications that you would like to take forward? Okay, yes, of course. This HRS is my application and UI kit is part of a built on application and I would like to take it. Whereas Pega rules is not an option. The thing is in the new environment also you will have Pega rules because it's going to be a Pega environment only. Correct. So you will always have Pega rules there also. So that's why only my HR is and if it can also will have right, so right. in case every no, time will be okay. no this particular UI kit if you have any changes on it if you remember okay. we, we made some changes on the portals and you know few yeah. things on it so if there are changes on it then you have to take it forward Okay. Otherwise, if it's just on the functionality that you have manipulated, nothing on the portals, nothing on harnesses and all, then you can just take the application directly. Next. Okay. Now, are there any other dependencies that are required? So these could be any uh, jars that you might need for your execution or some hot fixes. So hot fixes as in Pega uh, handles its defects or bugs in the form of hot fix. Okay. Suppose in Pega 8.6 version, you think there there is a uh, an issue. Okay, you you raise an SR for it and the customer uh, support team would be working on it. So they wouldn't release it as a new version. I mean, they will not say that okay, nine has raised an SR, so I'm going to create a new version of Pega for 8.7. No. Instead, they will release a hotfix, which is again a zip file. Right? So you need to import that in your application to make sure that issue is resolved. So in case if there are any such hotfixes you can have them added on the application dependencies. Okay. Right, so then next. I don't have any such you know other products or any hard fixes for now. Okay. Then what all organization divisional units would you need as part of your application? Ideally, only one organization would be available, whereas divisions and units could be multiple okay? because we can always extend our application to other uh, divisions and units. Right? You can create your own implementation applications for other division and units. So if that's the case, you can make a choice of what structure you would like to have. Okay? So for now, I'll let all of these be selected. I can proceed. Then access groups. What all access groups you would like to take forward? So when I'm moving it from dev to test, so those access groups that are part of developers can be held back. I don't need to move it forward. Okay. And if I'm doing it from test to prod, all those testers related access groups can be revoked. Right? So I, I can make a choice here. And similarly with the operators also, if I want to block or you know, revoke certain operators, I, I can 
discard them on this screen. Now I have admin manager as senior manager and vice president. But ideally you will have all the developers listed on the operators list. Correct? So all my yeah. dev team will be available. So those can be discarded here. So if I uncheck uh, the op any of the operator, mm -hmm. that operate that operator information will not go to will not be cover. available. Correct. Correct. Available. That or operator so instance will will not be listed in your new application. So in turn, they cannot access your application also. And we will be sending it every time, or uh, if there is any update, then only. Uh, every time as in migration you are telling yeah, so the access of migration you are asking yes see now every time as in whenever you have a deployment suppose there is a release that you are planning for every two months okay so what you do is first all the development happens on the dev environment okay and now considering two months, eight weeks as your release cycle. So what you do is by fifth week, whatever is developed, you, you will lock it. I mean, you will freeze that code. Right? Now that code is moved into testing environment. So for the entire sixth week, it will be on the test environment for all the testing. Now once the testing is complete, the same code will be moved to pre-prod in the seventh and then finally it would be moved on to the production environment in eighth week likewise okay so this is for the cycles and in case if you are dealing with any bugs or issues in between suppose like in, uh, in the sixth week during the test uh, testing phase the testing team has given you some bugs what you do is you will check whether this can be fixed in this uh, release or it is a huge bug that we cannot, you know, that it cannot be addressed in this release, you will consolidate that. I mean, you will categorize your bugs. Right? If you think, yes, it is a simple one, we can address it, then what you do, you will quickly work on it. That part of the code, just that simple product rule will be moved across. It's not an entire application this time. Just that one rule or two rules that are required to move uh, I mean, that are required to address your bugs. Only that will be part of your product. So in that case, I don't need all these operators, access groups. I don't need to add all of that. Just those two, two rules that are responsible for my bug have to be added. Okay. Yes. Right. But if it's for an entire release, of course, then you, you have to check all of these things. Are there any dependencies? Then any, you know, should I restrict any operators or should I restrict access groups? So if it's for an entire release, I would ideally go for a wizard. Okay. Yes. Then let us restrict some. Okay. So I, for now, I'll let all the operators be. Because I think they are part of my uh, authority matrix, right? So I will let them be. I will have to proceed. Then, work queues. Do you need all the work queues for your application? Or would you like to discard any? Yes, so. Now, in case if I need any work queues to be discarded, yes, I can do it here. So why should I discard some work queues? That's because few might be uh, specific to the dev environment where the development team would look into. So if you don't need that, we can discard it. I'll let them be. I want all of them for now. Let us proceed. Then comes your work groups. 
So there is one workgroup default XYZ. I'll also let this be. Okay. Then your data tables. So all those tables that you have used, so they should also be moved in the environment, in the new environment. So currently, there's a data table for approvals. And I don't have any records in it. We just created a data type. And we used it in one of my cascading approvals, right? But we did not uh, add any records onto it. So I see count is zero. But yes, I would need this uh, data type to be moved. Okay? Because without this, my cascading approval by authority matrix will not work. So I want this and let it be. So then any jars that are required probably you have integrated your system with some other external components so you might need jars in order to complete that but if you have any you can get them added okay and then my database storages all the tables that are involved Oh, I see a data approvals in I see HRS work. So all my history related related tables and my work related tables are involved. Okay. And in case if you are dealing with some marketing related applications, you will also have a database separately. Okay, but for now, as it is already part of Pega data, I don't need any other external databases. Okay, so I can just Proceed. And then the last one is integration resources. So if you try to integrate your application with you know, other external applications like Facebook or if you are trying to build some email listeners or if there are any other email accounts associated with it. So all those would be part of the integration resources. Okay. So you see, we can make a selection out of the integration resources depending upon our application type or depending upon the uh, implementation of your application. I can select if any of this is really important for us. We can choose. But ideally, for now, we do not have any aspects of integration involved. So I can just finish this and finally I will end up with a product rule now. Yes, so here is my product rule. I can preview it, I can modify, I can export, I can migrate. Let's see each of those options. Preview. So this shows what all rules are involved, what instances are involved, how many are involved. So I get to see a count here. Yes, so here you see, you get to see the rules, the instances. So currently on this, we have about 73 rules. Okay, so all part of few roles are there. Then data objects are there. Decision table, one decision table, four sections, then 11 properties. Likewise, I, I get to see all the instances of the rules that are moved across and in UI kit also we are moving so I get to see all the rules corresponding to it. it's about 860 rules are available then no framework related entities so far and the system data relating to data dash class some schema changes with respect to my three tables that are available and 
no jars. So this is how it looks.